Hello, hello, grade 12. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at momentum and impulse question, and we'll be doing a question and answer series as you have requested. I'll be showing you how I tackle momentum and impulse question. And without any further ado, let's get right down into the lesson. So now we are given question four there. And remember, the approach is you have to check if there are any other definitions that you can see there. And you just run straight to the definitions. Um, write your definitions first before you forget them. So we have a definition there in 4.1. It says, state the principle of conservation of momentum in weights. So let's check that. 4.1 says, principle of conservation of momentum states that the total linear momentum in an isolated system is conserved. Or you can say it remains constant. Awesome. Now, when you are done with the definitions, you can now read the statement and extract your data from the statement. Let's go. Um, we are given there, they say two friends on wheelchairs are playing on a surface that has negligible friction. The combined mass of girl A and the wheelchair is 60 kg. So now we're going to take the wheelchair and the girl as one object. So that's 60 kg for mass of A. At 60 kg, whilst that of girl B in a wheelchair is 85 kg. Right now, girl A moves to the right at a velocity of 0.60 meters per second. Right, moves where to the right and collides with girl B, who's stationary. Stationary, we know it tells us that the um, velocity, the velocity initial is zero, and after the collision, girl A and her wheelchair move with a velocity of 0 0.20 meters per second. So this is still the information of gel A. Gel A moves to the right at 0 0.60 meters per second. And then after the collusion, will move in the opposite direction at 0 0.20 meters per second. So that's left. Now, we only have one um, velocity for gel B, which is stationary velocity, initially zero. So 4.2 says, Calculate the velocity of the friend on wheelchair B immediately after the collision. So now we are looking for the velocity of um, the girl on wheelchair B immediately after the collision. So that's V finally after. Now from the marks here, you can tell that this is a question that we need to apply um, the law of conservation of momentum. And you can see even in 4.1, there is a hint because they made us state that principle. So once you see um, for five marks and then you are asked to calculate either the velocity or mass, just know in your mind that now you're using the law of conservation of momentum. Now let's check. So we have momentum, sum of momentum initially is equal to sum of momentum after. Now we can see that the objects were separate before and also will be separate after. So this is the formula we want to have. So you understand that on the left hand side, those are my velocities initially, and then for the final side, that's my velocities finally. Now, what is mass 1? Let's get A, 60 kg. And what was her velocity? 0 0.60. Then plus, what is the mass of girl B? Found that it was 85. Then her velocity, they said stationary. Stationary indicates that the velocity is 0. Then the mass of girl A, again, 60. But this time around, as a velocity of 0 0.20 to the left. So that's in the negative direction. So we indicate negative 0 0.20. Then we have plus, what is the mass of gel B? We have 85. And now we are looking for the velocity. Now let's indicate here that we chose right as positive. Uh -huh. Now, punching that in your calculator, you have 60 times 0 
which gives us 36 then we have 36 then 85 times 0 is 0 then we have our equal 60 times 0 point um, 60 times negative 0 0.20 that gives us negative 12 and then we have 85 b2 plus 85 b2 so at this point we want to transpose the 12 so we have 36 um, plus 12 that gives us 48 is equals to 85 k eighty five b two then what do we do at this point? We should divide both sides by eighty five so we have forty eight is equals to eighty five b two then that divided by eighty five that divided by eighty five we have v two is equal to zero point five six meters per second and to which direction since it's positive we have right and that's how you tackle that one now let's move along let's move along 4.3 says determine by means of a relevant calculation whether the collusion was elastic or inelastic so a relevant calculation whether the collusion was elastic or inelastic now we know when it comes to elastic or inelastic this is where now we consult the sum of ek so we know sum of ek this is just a matter of with proving whether something is elastic or with proving whether the collusion is elastic or inelastic it's just a matter of proving whether the ek initially is equal to the ek finally so now if we find that the two are equal right the ek initially is equal to the sum of ek final then we can say that the two are elastic that means there is no energy that was lost right to the frictional forces and your momentum was conserved now if in another case you have that the ek initial is not equal to the sum of ek finally then we say that this collusion was inelastic right so now let's check we want to calculate now how do we calculate this one we say first sum of ek initially then we have our formula is equal to half mv squared plus half mv squared now this is the initial you go you substitute everything in the initial so the mass of gel a was 60 and her velocity initially was 0 0.60 and that's square plus half the mass of gel b is 85 but her velocity initially was zero because she was stationary now putting that in your calculator you have 10.8 joules right now let's calculate the sum of ek finally and compare it to the sum of ek initial so now we have ek finally sum of ek finally again we have half mv squared plus half mv squared now the mass of gel a is 60 but a velocity finally is negative 0 0.20 then don't forget to square that then plus the mass of gel b is 85 and her velocity finally is the one that we calculated in the previous question it's 0 
and then square that. So now when you punch that in your calculator, you have 14.5282. And what do we observe from this? We can see that the EK initially and the EK finally are not equal. So in that case, we say the collusion is inelastic. The collusion is inelastic because sum of EK initially is not equal to sum of EK finally. Awesome. Now let's look at another question. They say, uh, Tim is playing snow kind positions is Q, blah, blah, blah. The first thing that we want to check is, do we have any definition? So 4.1 says, state Newton's second law of motion in terms of momentum. So remember, again, we want to write that as quickly as possible. So we have Newton's second law in terms of momentum, the net force acting on an object is equal to the rate of change in momentum of the object in the direction of the net force. Nice. Now that, I've, now that I have the definition out of the way, that's when I go back to the statement and extract my data. Now they say Tim is playing snow can position is Q so that the whiteboard is lined up with the black ball. A 0 0.6 kg whiteboard moving at a velocity of 0 0.5 meters per second collides with the what? stationary a stationary black ball so we have 0 0.6 kg for the white ball and it's even indicated on the diagram there and then mass 0 0.8 kg the black ball exerts a force of 1.2 newton on the white or on the white ball now we know when you play snooker you hit to the white ball so that uh, it, it hits the black ball, right? So now, but then here you are told the black ball exerts a force of 1.2 Newton on the white ball. So we know this is the case whereby we have Newton that law. And uh, if, if we say the black ball exerted a force of 1.2 Newton on the, if we say the black ball exerted a force of 1.2 Newton on the white ball, that means initially the white ball exerted a force of 1.2 newton on the black ball so now this is a case where we say newton's dead law when when object a exerts a force on object b object b will simultaneously exert an a force of equal magnitude but in opposite direction so the 1.2 newton came from the white ball and it is in positive direction in the, in the easterly direction now the black ball experiencing that force it exerted back to the white ball so now it's negative 1.2 newton in the westerly direction so the negative is to show that it is going in the opposite direction so that 1.2 newton that is experienced by the white ball is actually negative 1.2 newton to indicate that it is in the opposite direction, right? Now, let's see how that relates to our question here. We are given 4.2 if the change in momentum of the white ball, look at that, is what? Negative 0. Point, negative 0 0.24 kg meters per second. Now, you can see that the change in momentum of the white ball is negative, right? Because now, the, the white ball is experiencing what? A force from the black ball, which is in the opposite direction. When it hits, when it hits the black ball, it experiences a, a, a backward force, right? Then calculate the time that the white ball is in contact with the black ball. Now let's check. So now we know the formula to calculate the time as of yet. The formula that we have to calculate time is F net 
change in T is equal to change in P, which we say this is the momentum impulse uh, theorem formula, right? Then we are given the F net, remember. So let's manipulate this one so that we have change in, change in time being the subject of the formula. And change in P is equal to um, change in T is equal to change in P over F net. Now our change in P is negative 0 0.24. But we've already explained that the F net will be in the negative direction since we are taking um since we are approaching it from the side of the white ball, which the white ball is experiencing a negative directed force. Then change in T is equal to negative 0 0.24 divided by negative 1.2, and that gives us 0 0.2 seconds. Mm -hmm. Now let's move along. They say 4.3, calculate the velocity of the white ball after the collision. The velocity of the white ball after the collision. Now I know since you know about principle of conservation of momentum, it can be tempting to use that on this one. But if you can check here, let's look at the amount of marks. That's only three marks. And let's look at the information that we are given. We can see that we do have the mass of the white ball. We have the velocity of the white ball. And again, we have the momentum of the white ball. Now that alone, it means we can calculate what the velocity, because let's Let's collect our data. If we have change in P uh, being negative 0 0.24, and then we have our velocity initially being 0 0.5 meters per second, and our mass is 0 0.6 kg, then we are looking for Vf. Now you can tell from the data that we collected that this formula is more than enough to calculate that. Now let's go. Change in P is equal to M VF minus VI. Now our change in P is negative 0 0.24, and then the mass is 0 0.6. Then we are looking for the velocity finally. And the velocity initially is 0 0.5. Now, let's divide both sides by 0 0.6. We divide both sides by 0 0.6, we get negative 0 0.4. Then that's equal to Vf minus 0 0.5. Transpose that negative 0 0.5, we have Vf is equal to um, negative 0 0.4 plus 0 0.5, which then gives us Vf is equal to 0 0.1 meters per second. And to which direction now? To the right. So now you can see that um, the, the white ball will slow down after hitting that black ball, right? So it was moving at a velocity of 0 0.5. After the collision, now the velocity has slowed has slowing down to 0 0.1. Now 4.4 it says on being struck the black ball moved forward towards the bumper cushion on the sides of, of the snooker table and collided elastically with the bumper cushion. Right. So collided elast elastically uh, tells you now here that there was no energy lost, right? With the bumper cushion after collision, the kinetic energy of the black ball is 0 0.042 joules, right? So we are given that and we are required to calculate the velocity again for three marks. So we know three mark question is just the correct formula, substitution, and the correct answer, right? So now let's go. What is it that we have on the what is it that we have on the black ball? We do have its mass, and then we do have the energy here. So now, having EK is equal to half 
m p squared. We can see that we have our ek here check and then we have our mass there check and we are looking for the velocity. So this um, formula is enough to calculate the velocity there. Now let's go. So we have ek is equals to half mv squared. Now the ek is 0 0.042 joules. And then it's equals to half. The mass is 0 0.8. And then we have v squared, then it's 0 0.042 equals to the half of the half of 0 0.8 is 0 0.4. Then we have v squared, right? So we can divide both sides by 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Hmm. Then what do we have for that? Now we are left with v squared is equal to. 0 0.105. Now at this point, we are not looking for v squared. We are looking for v, so we need to uh, square both sides. And then we have v is equal to 0 0.32 meters per second. Right. And then that is um, east. Nice one. So now, 4.1 says, what is meant by an isolated system in physics? What is meant by an isolated system in physics? So let's check. An isolated system is when the net external forces acting on the system is equal to zero. Now the statement says, during an experiment, a rocket of unknown mass is mounted on a toy cut of mass 20 kg. The cut rocket combination, so we are given here the cut rocket combination, moves at a constant speed of 2.5 meters per second along a horizontal floor. At a certain instant, the rocket is fired horizontally in the direction of motion at a speed of 80 meters per second. As a result, the cut slows down to a speed of 0 0.6 meters per second, as shown in the diagram below. Now, 4.2 says, use relevant physics principle to explain why the firing of the rocket will slow down the cut. So let's run quickly to that. So 4.2, we say, according to Newton's dead law, when the rocket is fired, it will exert a force on the cut, which acts opposite to the direction in which the cut is moving, and thus will slow it down. So now we are applying Newton's dead law. We know that when we are firing this rocket, uh, there is the force of us firing the rocket, and the rocket is also exerting a force on that. So the cut is firing out the, the rocket at a, at a certain uh, force and the rocket will also want to exert that force back on the cut, right? So now as a result of the rocket exerting that force back on the cut, the cut then moves at an opposite direction. So as you see, as you see the rocket moving that way at a certain force, let's say F, now it will also exert that that force of equal magnitude but now in opposite direction so now when when the cut experiences that force in the negative direction it makes it to slow down right so it's more like it's moving backward but now since the speed was great so it will just slow down kind of decelerate then a uh, 4.3 says calculate the mass of the rocket at the instant the rocket was fired from the toy cut. Now you can see that we have five marks for that. Five marks tells you that you can now use um, the principle of conservation of momentum formula, whereby you say sum of momentum initially is equal to sum of momentum finally. So now let's get right down to that. 
Uh, so we have all the information there. Let's check. We have all the information. We are given that this is a card rocket combination. So if we have a card rocket combination, we say sum of momentum uh, initially. Is equals to sum of momentum final. Now remember, this is a combination. At first, there was a combination. So when there are a combination, they will share the same velocity as indicated in the diagram there. Right. So we have them sharing the same velocity. This is how we write them. For a combination, this is how we indicate that it is a combination. They share the same velocity. Now, after the collision, what happens? They separate. So also, we will separate. Then if they separate, that means now the, velo the velocities are no longer the same. So that's why you no longer combine them there. So now we have, let's say mass 1 is the rocket. We don't have the mass of the rocket. Plus mass 2 is the mass of the cut. We are given the mass of the cut. It is um, 20. And then the velocity of the of the cut rocket combination is 2.5. Then mass 1, we don't know. But the velocity, we know that the rocket, they said it is now fired at a velocity of 30. Then plus mass 2 is 20. And its final velocity now has slowed down to 0 0.6. Now, calculating that, we have 2.5 m, 20 times 2.5, that gives us a 50. And then now we have 30 times m, that's 30 m. Then we have 20 times 0 0.6, that gives us 12. Now, at this point, you want to, um, you want to have your like terms in the same side. So we can just bring over this 12 to the side. So we have 50 minus 12. And then we have 80m minus 2,5m. So all our like terms in just one side. Then let's calculate that. So we have um, 27,5m. And then when you say 50 minus 12, it gives us 88. Then divide that by 27,5. Divide by 27,5. Now we have the mass is equal to 1.38 kg. And that's it.